Our next personality is Abu Ala Ahmed bin Abdullah Al-Ma'arri, 973-1057. Al-Ma'arri, also known as the Eastern Lucretius, was famous for poetry and grammar. He was born in Syria, but traveled many places until he became blind. He lived in Baghdad for only 18 months, but within this short period of time, he made a name for himself as a poet. After returning from Baghdad, he lived in his hometown, Ma'arra, for another 50 years. Because of his fame, students from distant places went to al Ma'arri to learn from him. Like Ibn Sina, al Ma'arri did not believe in resurrection and strongly condemned religious beliefs. One of his poems says it all. Hanifs, or Muslims, are stumbling. Christians, all astray. Jews, wildered. Magians, far on error's way. We mortals are composed of two great schools, enlightened knaves or else religious fools. Once again, we find that another alleged Muslim luminary to have been no more Muslim than a pagan. He too was secular under the oppressive umbrella of Muhammadan Islam, yet as we all find out, the so-called scholars of Islam hold him to the world as a Muslim guiding light. Abu Rayhan Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Biruni, 973-1048. Al-Biruni was multi-talented. He contributed in physics, metaphysics, mathematics, geography, and history. His famous book, Kitab al-Hind, gives a vivid account of the historical and social conditions of the Indian subcontinent. Al-Biruni's astronomical achievements were in the line of Ptolemy. In mathematics, he dealt with algebraic definitions, trigonometry, and Archimedes theorems. It was Archimedes who gave birth to the calculus of the infinite conceived. Al-Biruni nurtured this concept, which was finally perfected by Kepler, Cavalieri, Fermat, Leibniz, and Newton. In religion, he was a Shiite Muslim, but with agnostic tendencies. The so said Encyclopedia Britannica 2000. Being agnostic, precludes him being a true Muslim. Once again, we find out that only with men who had discarded the mental and oppressive chains of Muhammadan Islam could they succeed and excel in knowledge. Umar al-Khayyam al-Nisaburi, 1048-1131. Umar al-Khayyam is best known for his ruba'iyat or poems, and he was an outstanding mathematician and astronomer. He also wrote a book of music, an un-Islamic act that may throw him in a burning hell. His calculation of 365.242198581568156 days making a year is so close to accurate that modern scientists respectfully remember his name. Omar al-Khayyam also found a geometric solution of cubic equations. Islam strictly prohibits martini and bikini. According to Quran, Muslim women are not allowed to reveal their beauty and drinking wine gives you a one-way ticket to hell. But Omar al-Khayyam was an admirer of beauty and wine. Drinking wine is my travail till my body is dead and stale. At my gravesite all shall hail, odor of wine shall prevail. Another piece of gem, heaven is incomplete without a heavenly romance. Let a glass of wine be my present circumstance. Take what is here now, let go of a promised chance. A drumbeat is best heard from a distance. Bravo, this guy is my hero. Listen carefully to the last two lines where he is encouraging to enjoy the earthly life and discard the idea of a promised hereafter. Mullahs and suicide bombers may learn a thing or two from Umar al-Khayyam's Rubahiyat. He was surrounded by Islam, a hopeless doctrine that promotes hatred, destruction, and racism. Yet Omar al-Khayyam found the meaning of a cheerful life. Once more we find the so-called Muslim scientist to have been as Muslim as an apostate. Yet once again, does another great mind appear under the dark umbrella of Muhammadan Islam, who shines beauty of letters, thought, reality, and spirituality in spite of the terror, hate, oppression, and joylessness that is Islam. By the way, 
most of the greatest minds that made contributions to the advancement and betterment of humanity were not Arabs, but Persians, Jewish and Christian converts, North Africans, Spaniards, etc. Another damning proof for the pudding is the fact that no human being can name five Mohammedan Muslims who have contributed anything of value to the world during the last 1,400 years of Mohammedan Islam in the Arabian Peninsula from among the tens of millions who live there. Dear ladies and gentlemen, the absolute majority of men who excelled under Islam were not true believers. They were mostly free thinkers and secular, not true Mohammedan Muslims. I repeat once again, absolutely nothing of value can ever be produced under the dark umbrella of fundamentalist Mohammedan Islam, not even a blade of grass. I rest my case.